Today I'm gonna to fix your bench press grip for a massive bench press. All right, so I have Sarah here today. Some of you guys have seen her on the channel before. I'm gonna teach Sarah how to fix her bench press grip. So Sarah, go ahead and lay down. We're gonna set up your bench press. Keep your eyes just about on this side of the bar, just a little bit, scoot down just a tad. Nice big arch. So first is the width. We wanna take a grip that's gonna facilitate perfectly vertical forearms in the bottom. So I kind of have to guess in the beginning with a new lifter where that's going to be, and I'll adjust after I see the first rep. Let's start with you. Let's put your thumbs out and basically line up the ends of your thumbs with the edge of the knurl. And the knurl should be the same for all barbells. Now, they're probably not at some really terrible globo gyms, and bad bars, but in general, this should be the same width. So it's gonna be about a thumbs width to a hands width wider than your press grip, right? So that's a pretty good place to start. And you're gonna wrap your fingers around the bar and we want the bar as low in your, in your palms as we can possibly get. So, yep, no hook grip there. So just a kind of a reverse hook grip. So thumbs on top of the index fingers first. The key right now that I'm gonna look for is how wide your grip should be or how narrow it should be. So when you're ready, take a deep breath. One, two, three, hold it at lockout. I'll get out of your way. All right, bring the bar down and pause it on your chest. And we're looking for perfectly vertical forearms at the bottom. That looks pretty good. Press it back up. Let's do it again. Keep your wrists as tight as you can on the way down. One more rep and pause, stay tight. Perfectly vertical forearms, press back up. Good. All right, so this time I wanna show what a close grip looks like. So if you take a narrow grip, more like your press grip, what you'll notice at the bottom is that your elbows will be outside your wrists. And we'll talk about why that matters. So go ahead and take a grip that's much closer. All right, so this is your close grip. Bring it down, pause. There, and you see your elbows are outside your wrist. Press back up. Do it one more time. Keep your wrist really straight. Wrist straight, elbows out, and fire up. So with this close grip, take your grip right where the neural starts, just like so. Take a deep breath. Lower under control. At the bottom, your elbows are gonna be more closed off. Press back. They're gonna be more closed. That means your triceps have to do more work, and there's a longer range of motion here, right? Let's rack it. Let's try wide grip this time. And we'll talk about why a wide grip might be necessary for competitive power lifters. But what you'll notice with a wide grip is that your wrist will be outside your elbows. So this time take a grip where your pinkies are on this inside ring, just like that. Go ahead and rotate your hands so that your wrists are underneath your hands. Pause it at the bottom, press. Good, let's do it again. You can see that your elbows are inside your wrist this time. Stay tight, press, good. In contrast, a wide grip, so you're gonna put probably your pinkies on the ring or maybe even your ring finger on the ring. And this time you'll notice, one, two, three, that your elbows are less closed, shorter range of motion, press back up, and less triceps, right? So this is why powerlifters wanna use it because they wanna cut down on the range of motion. Let's do one more. Back up, hold, rack, good job. So this first grip where you wrap your hands around, fingers around the bar, and you squeeze your fingers with your thumb, this is called the compression grip. And, re and there's several correct ways to grip a barbell on a bench press, but the thing that must be done is that the barbell must stay as low in your palm as it possibly can. If it gets back here like this in overextension, that's a moment arm and it's an energy leak. I don't want that. Also, if it gets in over flexion, that puts me in danger of actually losing the bar over the thumb and dropping it on my neck. That's a, that's a bad deal. So I actually wanna think about it, keeping completely straight or neutral wrists. The wrists are actually gonna be in about five or 10 degrees of extension, so a tiny bit of extension, but you don't really have to think about it being that way. This is a compression grip. This is the one that I use personally. I like it. And one of the ways to make sure you're tight enough is you can actually think about bending the bar in half. Like I'm actually gonna squeeze the bar as if I'm trying to bow the bar as I'm benching. That's how hard I'm gonna squeeze it. Bring it down slow and smooth, pause and throw. Perfect, rack it for a second. Now, let's talk about the relationship between the barbell, your hand, your wrist, your forearm, your elbow, right? Go ahead and take that same grip. So like we mentioned before, we want the barbell as low in your, in your hand, as low in your palm as you can possibly get it. But that will also keep the barbell over the load-bearing bone 
of the forearm, which is the radius, right? And really, over both of the forearms, both of the forearm bones, but the load-bearing one is the radius, which is sort of on the inside of your arm. So we wanna keep the barbell, your palm, your wrist, your forearm bone, and your, and your elbow all basically in a straight line, stacked underneath each other, right? So let's see what that looks like down at the bottom. Bring it down and press. Okay, let's rack for a second. We talked before that the forearm is gonna be perfectly vertical from the front, but from the side, you're actually gonna see your elbow be very slightly in front of the wrist. And that's because the forearm angle tells you where the bar is going. And because we've talked about this in our previous bench press videos, because I have to touch lower on the chest and because the rotation point is the glenohumeral joint or your shoulder joint, the bar is gonna make a little bit of a curve as it comes back. And so I actually am gonna touch a little lower, lock it out a little higher. And if that's the case, my forearm needs to be at a slight angle. How much? I don't know, five degrees, right? So everything else is gonna be stacked directly underneath the thing that's above it. So let's try this again. Down nice and smooth and tight all the way to your chest and press back. That looks great. Let's do one more exactly like that. Tight wrist, keep it as low in the palm as you can. Perfect. So we're gonna try a bulldog grip. So we start where your, where your normal compression grip would be. You're gonna point your thumbs down, put the bar as low in the palm of your hand as you can, go ahead and wrap your thumb, and then pinch the bar with your fingertips. Just like so, just like that, here too. Now, remember, keep the bar as low in your hand as you possibly can. It's gonna feel super weird. You've never done it before, but it's basically impossible, or nearly impossible, to let the bar roll back in your hand because there's a big gap here between the rest of your hand and the barbell. It's clearly sitting, not just stacked over your wrist, but specifically over the radius forearm bone instead of the ulna out here. So the main load-bearing bone of the forearm is what the bar is sitting on top of. So let's try it, thumbs down, put it as low on your thumb as you possibly can, and then just pinch your fingers on top. Boom, just like that. Now, that's exactly right. Ready? Let's try it. One, two, three. That looks great. Nice and smooth, give me two reps. Down and up, elbows forward. Good, and rack it. There is a grip that a lot of people use and it's really dangerous, they call it the suicide grip. They call it that for a reason. So it's basically like the compression grip, but your thumb is not gonna be wrapped around the bar. So go ahead and take that grip for a second. I'm actually not gonna let you bench press this way. Go ahead and do it. Now, if I'm gonna keep the bar as low in my hand as I possibly can and keep the bar stacked on top of my wrist, which is the, what I should do, what's the inherent danger of not having my thumb wrapped around the bar? Well, there's a good chance that the, there's nothing holding the bar on my wrist. So theoretically, if I, if I lose any balance at all, the bar's gonna go this way, it's gonna free fall, it's gonna fall in my throat, right? Or drop through my chest cavity, which is a real bad thing to do. So we always, always, always wrap our thumbs around the bar. Watch more videos for how to build a stronger bench press right there.